are interesting places. We don't see it that much in Australia. The borders are places where cultures, languages, practices meet, meld, and occasionally fight. We live in a time where due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused the need to close borders, where we have become far more aware of borders and the impact than we might have been in the past. Today we're going to hear the story of a border encounter, an encounter between Jesus and a woman of another culture, an encounter where we will see a meeting, a crossing of borders, which is far more than just that of the border between two regions, but indeed a meeting where culture, practice, ideas meet, meld and fight a little bit but where we will see faith and the transformative grace of God at work. The gospel calls us as followers of Jesus to be a people ready to follow him to the borders, not necessarily literal borders, such as I'm standing at today, but indeed borders where we meet and we encounter those who are different from us, where we in fact press and challenge the boundaries that our society may want to impose. These can be difficult and perhaps threatening meetings, and though they may be such, to meet each and all others in these encounters, we too can know, experience and be agents of the transformative grace of God. Welcome wherever you may be whenever this may be for you, as we pause in this time of worship. As we do so, we acknowledge that the land on which I am standing, where Canberra City Uniting Church normally meets, is the land traditionally of the Nungawa people. And we pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. We are going to explore together these themes of borders encounters in our worship. But now we enter into a time of prayer, and song as we join and listen to a prayer and respond with the words in various languages in Shona, in um, Tongan and in Korean and English the prayer Jesus Tawapano Jesus we are here Places of different ages and cultures bringing different experiences and skills. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, Through the changes and challenges of life, with our joys and sorrows, bringing gratitude and concern, Jesus, we are here.
உற்சாகத்திலும் எண்ணக்குலைவிலும் துணிவிலும் தயக்கத்திலும் இயேசுவே நாங்கள் இங்கே இருக்கிறோம் today gathered in your name and the promise that you will be with us. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, Um, we're here with Kelly. Kelly is one of our students who attends at Canberra City Uniting Church. She's been very regular with us for some time and is also a very active member of the Christian Students Uniting um, Student mm -hmm. Fellowship Group. And um, sadly for us, Kelly has finished and she has graduated and she'll be heading back home. And so we want to take the opportunity to say farewell and to Pray for Kelly and wish our bless. So, hi Kelly, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good, thank you, good. Um, Kelly, I'm just wondering if you'd like to um, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and where you're going, and I also know that you have a, a letter that you would like to read to the church, and so I'll just hand over to you for a while. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Paul. So I actually wrote the thank you letter for the church family. Dear Church family, I would like to thank all of you for walking this journey with me. Thank you, Paul, for providing us meaningful Sunday services. Thank you, Irina and Vicky, for introducing this church to me. Thank you, Dennis and Margaret, for taking care of our CSU students and arranging everything for us. We enjoyed those exciting trips and your homemade delicious meals a lot. Thank you, Terry and Grace, for inviting us to the farm. Thank you, Jenny, for taking cute pictures. Thank you, Dennis, Terry, Isin, Irina, Eileen, Bianca, Bernard, Christine, for attending CSU Zoom meetings. It was nice, nice to see everyone's face on every Tuesday. Also, Andre and Joanna, Edwin, David, and Fiona, missing the time we spent together. And of course, Thank you, my Lord, for leading me to such a great church family. You guys are amazing. It would never be the same without you guys. I made many friends in church and I love them. It is very hard to say goodbye to the church family and this lovely land. Life here has been beautiful and peaceful that I never want to say goodbye. However, life is like a train that people comes and goes. The value is that we spend precious time together and those memories will forever be in our hearts. Never say goodbye, my friends, just see you later. As we all know, eventually, we will all reunion with joy in God's kingdom. I would like to end this thank you note with a Bible verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was lovely. So, Kelly, um, you're returning home to China? Yeah, and yeah. What was the area that you did your study in? The mar I studied marketing management. All right. So, Kelly, we do thank you for that, that letter of thanks. And, and I want to say that it, it has been lovely having you as part of our church. We are going to miss you. 
um, as we, you know, you, you became one with us. You became one of our fellowship, our community, and it would be sad to see you go. But we, as you said, will continue to be connected in the love of God and we will hold you um, in our prayers and be very interested to hear of your journey forward and how God leads you. And so I'd like to finish now by just offering a prayer for you at this time. So let's pray. Loving God, we give thanks for Kelly. We thank you for her presence amongst us, her, her friendly, her gentle nature, for her appreciative nature. We thank you for the achievements that she has made while she's been here through her studies as well as the friendships that she has made, for her participation in the life of our congregation and the CSU Fellowship and all that she has given to both the fellowship and to the church. God, as Kelly prepares now to return home to China, we pray for your blessing upon her. We pray for your blessing as she finishes up here in Canberra and during the grief and the, the time of saying farewell for blessing and safety for her and her travels and that you will help her to settle into to um home safely and well and also to find a, a place of fellowship a community of the church with whom she can join and meet and that she will know your blessings in each and every part of her life into the future we pray this in jesus name Amen. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Happy is the mortal who does this, the one who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refrains from doing any evil. Do not let the foreigner joined to the Lord say, The Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me, and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly. I'd like you to pause and consider the icon that we have of the encounter between Jesus and the Canaanite woman. As an icon, this is not just a representation of the encounter. 
Rather, this is a reflection upon the encounter and an invitation to us to enter in and join in this reflection. So take a moment and settle yourselves and ponder the icon. What do you see? Who are the characters in this story? How do they seem to you? When you look at the woman, what thoughts are brought forth for you? What do you feel for her? What about Jesus? How does he appear? How do you respond to this betrayal of Jesus? Take note too of the others. The disciples gathered behind Jesus. How do they seem to be responding to Jesus' words? Do they mirror Jesus' appearance? Do they seem in opposition? Or are they puzzled? And the others, those in the top corner, how do they seem? Sit quietly with this image and the story for a moment. Do you find yourself inside this story? If so, who are you? Do you find yourself right outside the story? And if so, what is that experience like? The story of the meeting between Jesus and the Canaanite woman is a story of a border encounter. It's not so clear in our English translations, but the implication of the words is that Jesus is travelling toward, but not actually entering the region of Tyre and Sidon. The woman from that region is coming out from that region. They are meeting between. This is a meeting of two people from two cultures in a between space, a liminal space. They are people who bring with them a whole load of baggage, of of a history of conflict, of conquest, of a history of marginalisation and exploitation and also of exclusiveness and, and arrogance of a superior conquering nation. In this border place, these two people with all that baggage and all that history meet. And despite all the reasons why they shouldn't, they engage in conversation. The woman has a need and she is going to allow nothing to deter her from seeing that need met. For all his cultural exclusivity, and even the language that he used certainly exposes that, Jesus will not be dissuaded by the entreaties of his companions or by that cultural background, and himself also engages in a lively and what we would call robust conversation with this woman. It is a conversation of two strong voices, ready to put their case, and a conversation in which faith and grace are very present. When we hear this story, we often want to affirm it as a story of the inclusiveness of the gospel and how boundaries are transcended by God's grace. This is a really important affirmation and the other reading that we have heard from Isaiah also makes this affirmation as it speaks of people who would normally be excluded from the community of God's people, named specifically as those being included. The story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman is truly a story of inclusiveness. But it is so much more, and we do it a disservice, if we stop just merely as saying it is about being welcome. Because you see, it's an easy thing to say, you are welcome but it is a much greater thing to actually engage with each other across our diversity, 
to meet, to interact, to allow our experiences, our ideas, our backgrounds, our practices to really become known to each other and to be in fact changed by that encounter. As we come to this story, firstly it's important that we, sh we recognise that this is an encounter that Jesus sought out. Tyre and Sidon are on the coast to the northwest of Galilee. They are out of Jesus' way. They're out of the nation of Israel. Why is Jesus doing this? Why is he going out of his way like this? I'd like to suggest that he is actually doing this quite deliberately. Immediately before today's reading, there is a passage about the idea that just because of where you go or what you eat, you are not defiled. And I think Jesus is seeking to model this in his own practice. He is seeking this encounter, perhaps not with this specific woman, but particularly with a person of another culture to show that indeed we can so engage and in no way are defiled by this, but in fact enriched in God's grace. For all of the exclusiveness that's demonstrated in the language that he uses in this discussion, Jesus has gone to the border and he does not shy away from this conversation. It was never going to be a comfortable conversation, but then again, when is the gospel about comfort? See, this is an important lesson when we talk of talking about of following Jesus. It's easy for us to remain in our silos with the familiar and with the uncomfortable. But if we are truly to embrace the gospel call, the call of Jesus to follow Jesus, then we need to be following him into the places that leave us uncomfortable. When we encounter that which may be different from our experience and which is unfamiliar to us. For it is at that point of the margin spaces that we hear the cries which can challenge us and which keep challenging us. Let me offer you a personal perspective as we think about this. Earlier, as we reflected on the icon, I asked you to imagine yourself where you might find yourself in the story. For me, as a privileged white bloke, I am confronted by the woman's persistent cry for compassion. This woman will not be silent. She will not be deterred by the voices of the disciples who tell Jesus, tell her to shut up. She won't give up. When I consider this story and what it says to me, I hear the persistent cries of those who, because of their race, their gender, their ability, or for whatever reason, are in some ways diminished, marginalised or excluded within our society. I hear their cries calling out for inclusion, for recognition, for being seen as equal. I hear the persistent cries of this nation's indigenous people for justice. I hear the persistent cries of those who are seeking shelter for compassion. I hear the persistent cry of an exploited and overburdened planet for us as human beings to learn to live fairly and sustainably as members of this planet's community. I hear this story as a great story of inclusion in the Christian community and the way we learn from and are enriched by each other. And I love that. But it, the gospel won't let me stop there. <coughs> it demands of me that I hear the woman's cries. Perhaps you hear the story differently. Indeed. Perhaps you hear in yourself the woman's cries in your thirst for justice, compassion, healing or acceptance. The gospel affirms your cries. The gospel promises that Jesus does not turn from you. The gospel encourages you to persist. Perhaps 
you see yourself in the daughter with no voice of your own, but yearning for those who will speak on your behalf, who will champion your cause. Perhaps you find yourself in the story in a different way, or indeed, don't find yourself in the story. And must ask yourself and be open to how the story may still speak to you, how the gospel may still call to you. No matter where you find yourself with regards to this story, the call of the gospel is not to shy away. Jesus steps into this moment, this encounter, and he calls to us to be with him in this space between, with all its awkwardness and all its challenge. For in this space, we discover the fullness of who we are, who we are called to be, and in some amazing way, we experience and are agents of God's grace and the world is changed. Amen. We come now to our prayers for others. So let us pray. Creating God, we delight in your extravagant gift of the fruitful earth. We see your loving skill as we watch the seasons shape and reshape plants and trees. We delight in your extravagant gift of the variety of plants and trees. You have loved each of these into life, gerberas and camellias, oranges and persimmons, spinach and rosemary. And we laugh that a weed in one place is a cultivated flower in another. You created all things and see that it is good. We delight in your gift of placing the different together, the smallest of bulbs growing in the comforting shade of the largest of trees, the sharp yellow of marigolds softened by the blue of forget-me-nots. We are amazed at the colours of creation. You created all these and see that it is good. We delight also that you made people in many shapes and sizes, people of different colours and languages and abilities. And we know that we flourish when we're in touch with others, when we share gifts and understandings. You created all things and all people and see that it is good. Eternal God, as we celebrate the cultural and religious diversity of this our land, we hope for true community in our life together. But we know that there are many things happening which we grieve today. We grieve the grave injustices and pain suffered by Aboriginal people in the invasion of their land and which are still born more than 200 years later as they struggle to reclaim their life as a people. We grieve for the untold stories of fear and loss, of refugees who have fled their country, and migrant people who came here in hope, bearing many gifts. We grieve they sometimes find themselves unwelcome and struggling to find their place among us and we share their grieving. We grieve for those from religious traditions other than our own, who though free to practice their beliefs, nonetheless feel their tradition is misunderstood or f themselves ostracised for being different. We regret our religious exclusiveness. We grieve that some feel less than cared for or respected, forced to the margins of society. Children without homes and caring families. And at this time we remember particularly those elderly people in retirement facilities who are suffering from indifferent care or even neglect. We pray, O oh God, that we might be a country 
in which people are accepted, no matter what their faith tradition, their gender, their age, no matter what their abilities. Come to us, Spirit of Peace, and lead us towards a new community of acceptance. Make us fearless to confront injustice and compassionate in pleading the cause of those in need. Rejoicing in your new creation and in your presence here among us, we pray with confidence. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Lead us always on the journey of justice, the ways of compassion to learn. Guide us, O oh God, in the pathways of truth, seeking your peace every turn. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Teach us to see you in friend and in stranger, to know you in those who we meet. May the love that we've known be the love that we show. Through us may you touch those we greet. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Christ be within, before and behind us, Christ to our left and our right. In the twists of the road as we journey this life, be with us by day and by night. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. As you go into this week and all that it holds for you, God bless you with peace. May you know the peace of God for which all creation yearns, flowing upon you and within you, bringing healing in pain, harmony in turmoil, wisdom in confusion, hope in despair, that you may be bold to live compassionately and generously in the way of Christ. God bless you with peace. May you know the peace of God filling you so that in your lives, in your words and in your deeds, the peace of God will flow forth as a life-giving stream, bringing healing, harmony, wisdom and hope, compassion and generosity to all. Amen. Hi everybody, I've got an important announcement to make. From next week here at Canberra City Uniting Church, we'll be both doing a worship gathering here in the church 
as well as continuing our online worship via the YouTube videos and the City at Night Zoom worship gatherings. So you can continue to worship online as we have been for the last few months or you are welcome to join us here at Canberra City Uniting Church. In our gathering here in the church, however, we will be continuing to maintain social distancing. There will be music, but we won't be able to sing together. And there won't be any morning tea, though if you wish to go out into the plaza following the service for a socially distanced chat, you are free to do so. We are wanting to be cautious and stick to a COVID safe plan because we are still in a time of pandemic. Anyone is welcome to come, but if you are feeling sick or you have been in a situation where you may have been in contact with the virus, we do ask you to stay at home and possibly even get tested. Also, we are limiting numbers for our first gathering to 40. We will be increasing numbers as the weeks go by, but for this first week, there will only be 40 people as well as the leaders who will be able to join us in a worship gathering here in the church. And so it is important to book. And following this video, there will be a slide that will have the details about how you may book. Booking is also essential because we need your contact details in case we have to do any contact tracing. The church is being cautious in this because we want to keep everyone safe. However, this is still a really exciting time as we're able to come together again. And I look forward to seeing those of you who are able to join with us next Sunday, the 23rd of August. Thank you.